up for sunrise. Haven't been up for sunrise in forever. Beautiful morning. Okay, so I was really hoping that this morning would be would be payoff for waking up so early. Holy shit. I better run before this burns off. When the last time I smiled so early in the morning. <laughs> when the last time you've been up so early in the morning. What a payoff. Oh, great. Yesterday we flew all the way from Buffalo, crossed the state line into Vermont for the first time, and made it to our first destination of Basin Harbor and Lake Champlain. We got up for sunrise. We decided we we're gonna get breakfast. Becky got some coffee, I had a tea. And it was really nice to be able to just sit on the rock and look out onto the lake, Lake Champlain, and just sip coffee and hang out with my husband, and just really enjoy our time. When I asked you guys on Instagram a couple months ago for recommendations on what to see in Vermont, Lake Champlain was one of the most common suggestions. We saw the lake from the air when we came in. And of course, we saw it from the ground in the morning while we were sipping our coffee, but we wanted to get on the lake as well. Okay, so this is only our first stop on our whole trip. It's the only one we're doing in Vermont. Really would like to do justice to all the states we're going to, but when you factor in the fact that, yeah, we're going for two weeks, which sounds like a long time, we've got three, four states, if you consider New York, to hit. You factor in like two to three days per stop, that's 12 days out of 14, and we've got two weeks off. We also have to pad those numbers heavily for weather. When you factor all those constraints in, you really only get like one stop per state, realistically. So this, we thought that this place in Basin Harbor would be a good representation, and had a lot to offer. And it was sort of a one-stop shop, and it had its own airstrip too, so we couldn't really pass it up. So we saw Lake Champlain from the air, we saw it from the dock, now we want to see it from on it or in it, so we're gonna go rent a boat. I don't really know how to drive a boat. <laughs> I asked the front desk, I was like, do I need to like show a boat like license or he's like, no, you don't need a license to, fly, to drive a boat. Do you need a license to fly a helicopter? I'm like, yeah, you, you do need a license to fly a helicopter. You, you, you need a lot of training too. Like this is a recipe for like being overconfident in something. He's like, oh yeah, fly a helicopter, I'll be able to drive a boat. It's like, no, they're not crossovers. <laughs> that's how you get in a situation where you feel overconfident and underqualified or something. That's how accidents happen. So we're gonna be very careful, but also I like going fast. So let's go. <laughs> I have no idea if this is gonna be like a fun, positive experience or a terrifying, and dangerous experience. Maybe a bit of both. <laughs> you don't want to drive the boat? No. I don't want to drive the boat. She doesn't like driving anything. She has no interest in flying the helicopter, no interest in driving the boat. Do you like to do anything? F you. <laughs> yeah, you. you slow. Graphic design. She likes to do graphic. She likes to do graphic design. <laughs> I made Chris do it because he's the pilot, so I figured that, you know, those skills can probably transfer to boating. Um, how do you feel? Um, <laughs> well, I, I mean, forward, back, that's basically what they said, steer. <laughs> we rented a 21-foot Key West boat, and we took the boat out onto the lake. All right, they got the little bumpers that you throw over the edge, so hopefully those can absorb some shock. Oh, Jesus. It's kind of like piloting a, a vessel in a fluid medium, which is like- You don't so hit funny. those people. I'm not going to hit the people that are over there. How do I, I know I'm neutral now, but like, like, how much does this do, you know? We should go up the lake, probably. Up that way? I don't want to go rip a wake here and then descend a paddle border falls over. So we, we forgot our life jackets. Like I wouldn't want to ride a bike without a helmet. So yeah. we roll back into the marina. I was like we, I was like we forgot our life jackets. He's like they're in the boat. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> It's like did you check in the boat? I'm like nope. <laughs> I looked in this cabinet and I saw a lock on this, but um yeah, it does open. Oh, well. Boat. News. Shows shows how much we know. Well, you know what? Better be safe than sorry. Concerned, they recommended we go up here, so Let's see how this guy does it. I don't know if I'm skilled enough to do this, and I don't really want to be embarrassed right now. Oh, we saw Essex, New York. Here it is. The Adirondacks were on this side, and over here, I'm assuming what can only be the green or white mountain. You got what I can't resist, and I'm into this to get close to you. Did not 
crashed the boat, we made it back safe. It was a very pleasant boating experience, which is, I don't think that's ever come out of my mouth in my life. After we were on the lake, we came back and I thought, you can't see the lake from the sky, see it from the ground, see it from being on it. You had to get in it. The lake's kind of calling me. There's a diving board right there. By this time, it was pretty cold. It was a bit windy and a bit chilly, but I had to jump in the lake. Not a chance. What? It's What's a wrong? sharp zebra muscle. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are zebra muscles? There were some, what were they called? Sharp zebra mussels. I've never heard of them either, but there's signs everywhere, so I said shag that. Look, they got some stairs for your granny ass right here. There's a lot of al like <sighs> feelers. The lake life is calling me. The no, lake what? life. You can't see the lake, be next to the lake, go on the lake, and not get in the lake. No, sir, I don't like it. Not jumping in the water from the diving board because she was afraid of the razor sharp mussels and the diving board height itself, even though it was only four feet. I was afraid of the mussels and the height of the diving board. <laughs> so I opted for an older woman's selection, a more senior approach, and took the stairs. Oh my shit! It's so cold! <laughs> I didn't expect you to actually do it. Oh, I kind of want to go back in. Walked down over the stairs, freezing. Put my body in there. You know when you get into into like really cold water and you start like, <gasps> like you can't catch your breath? I have to look really cold water. Oh gosh, that's what happened. So much seaweed is touching my legs! Gross! <laughs> you that was refreshing. I was gonna swim to the other side, except for something touched my leg. <laughs> I did not like it. Anyway, we got back to the hotel room, took a quick shower, washed the lake off me, and I actually felt super relaxed afterwards. I don't know if it was just like submerging the body in the cold water and then getting into a hot shower. Johnny did do a video on it. There's science behind it and it worked. And so I was relaxed. That was a lot of fun. After that, we got a bite to eat. Becky went for her exciting activity of shooting photos. We're gonna try to get a couple of photos, sun setting. We're not sure if we're gonna get a bunch of one tonight, but we're gonna go try to get some photos anyway. Photo mission, let's, let's do, do it. it. So I was hoping for a bit of a, an epic sunset tonight because last night when we came in, it was stunning. But now there's this big, huge blob of cloud right over exactly where the sun sets. I don't think we're gonna get a very good sky, but it's giving us this kind of really minimalistic layered look. Flies are there wake surfing. I just wanna take a picture of this leaf. <laughs> <laughs> We're just shooting for fun. Some <laughs> shots don't turn out, some of them do. Sometimes it's fun just to press the shutter and look at something different. We both started shooting photography just for fun like that. I'll tell you one thing. Uh -huh. I'm sad to see this place go. Uh -huh. It was a lovely stay, beautiful views, weather's great. Mm -hmm. But I am excited for our stay tomorrow, which is gonna be completely different from this. But I think it's gonna be a lot of fun and it's gonna be a bit of an adventure and hopefully a little bit of um, jazz for the mind. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't. Jazz for the mind? What does that mean? Jazz for the mind. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> when you see a place and it's inspirational, it makes oh, it's your brain happy. It's gonna tickle your Tickle interior, my fancy. Tickle your interior design fancy just right. Yeah. So long as the internet isn't deceiving, but I will miss the lake and the views. Mm -hmm. Look at the sunset now that there's color now that we're done shooting. We were going to get some dinner, and of course, um, the sky kind of lit up this beautiful neon, pinky, bluey, yellow color. I think it was a really great way to end the evening to just like stand back and kind of look at it, not through the lens of a camera, but actually just sit there and, and appreciate the colors and the layers in the sky and the layers of the mountains. There's a smell of campfire through the air, and it was warm, the wind had died down, and it was just a really nice, it was a nice sensory experience, we'll say. During the day, we also took some time to plan out what the next step in this trip was gonna be. We kind of loosely have an itinerary, but nothing is set in stone. Where we go largely depends on the weather too, so the weather's supposed to be good, so I think we can just leave whenever we want. This airport is owned by this whole resort, Basin Harbor Resort. So it's like a little, it's not actually a private airstrip, it's still listed as a public airstrip, um, but it's part of the resort here. So you fly in, 
a little golf cart will come up if you're staying here and get your stuff and take you right to the lodge. It's great. I don't know, I'm not sure how old this airport is, but I know that this resort has been here for at least 100 years. There's a photo on our wall that's from 1910 and it's been in the family for five generations. A little bit hard to find. We were coming in on approach and I'm like, is this it? Nope, that's a farm. Oh, there's the runway. Snake in, kind of go in and you kind of just descend into the little tree. So I don't know from, from for all my fixed wing friends how uh, easy or hard of an approach it would be, but for a helicopter, it's, you know, piece of cake. So this is a single grass strip. We have a working windsock. It's untowered, meaning there's no power to control the airspace. No FBO, we got this lovely restaurant and there's an outdoor seating area so people can make fun of your landing. It's the first airport that I've seen with a soccer field. Goal! I had a really good time here. Yeah, me too, it was really yeah. fun. This was a really fun spot. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the variety that we get with all the different areas. Not just landing zones, but also, you know, the amenities and anything basically from camping in a tent to a full service resort. Hopefully the weather holds up. It looks good. It looks, it's supposed to be VFR all day. So we're gonna cross our fingers that nothing weird happens in the mountains because sometimes the mountains can be a little bit unpredictable. Space and Harbor Traffic, helicopter 300 Whiskey Zulu, departing from runway two, zero left cross on departure to the southeast Space Harbor. Goodbye, Vermont. Oh, well, they gotta get some altitude for the mountains. Yeah. Did you say that's an excellent little B-roll clip and not even realize it? It's B-roll. <laughs> B-roll. B-roll. Let's blow this popsicle stand. <laughs> where does that come from? Like, where, where, What is the popsicle stand? I've never seen a popsicle stand. Let's blow this popsicle truck. <laughs> the remnants of Hurricane Ida are kind of coming up now and we're seeing the effects of that tonight. All that she's got left is a 12 passenger van. You're looking at so it's a bit of a shift of gears when you're comparing sort of a full amenities resort experience with more of a self-sufficient small tiny cabin in the woods. Ida's passed, so I'm glad that we had permanent accommodations last night. It just rained constantly the entire night. 300 Whiskey Zulu is an R44 departing from Concord en route to Portsmouth. Let's see all of the lathe. Houses were built so different back then. It was really cool to kind of get thrown back in time to see a little bit of history of Portsmouth. Much headroom, huh? No. We're gonna get fish and chips. Seafood. Seafood. When I see food, I eat it. <laughs>